gamers. Today, we're gonna be teaching you how to counter the Jushi's Legacy Zuginu 1TC. So recently I've made a guide for it. If you're watching on YouTube, it's probably already up. But since I've created the guide for it, uh, there's also other guides. So this is not a new build for Jushi's Legacy. I decided to create and give you guys the antidote as well. Because I think the guide that I made for Jushi Legacy is very easy to do, very easy to execute, and it's pretty strong. But it is not played at the tippity top level. And that is because it has counters with whatever civ you play. I've kind of tried to, obviously I cannot make, you know, a game for each of the 16 civilizations how to play against Jushi's Legacy. So what I did is I kind of divided them into categories. So the first game I'm going to show you is French slash Rus slash, slash JD slash any night civ really. Then the second replay I'm going to show you is with Japanese, which a lot of people have asked for. And then the last one I've done is Delhi versus uh, Jushi's Legacy. Uh, because Delhi, one of the biggest struggles, I guess, for Delhi is Jushi Legacy and that one TC Zugin all in. So I decided to record those three games. The games I did not plan on playing is Byzantines, English and Malian. And the reason for that is those three saves counter Jushi's Legacy Zuginu spam because you have longbows which counter Zuginu pretty effectively and then Malian and Byzantines have javelin throwers which absolutely demolish them. So if you don't know how to counter Jushi with those sieves, make longbows and make javelin throwers. All right. So let's get into it. Uh, this is not a build order guide. If you want build order for any of these sieves, for any sieve in AOE4, I have them up on my YouTube channel. So this is not a build order guide. Now, this game with French, uh, obviously you want to stay on a bit on a sheep, but I noticed uh, my deer are somewhat close to my town center, so I immediately went for them. Um, mm. And I scouted them immediately, so I could make that decision. You know, I can go for that immediately with survival techniques. So, what is the why is why are the French uh, sorry the cavalry sieves why are they the best counter to uh, Zuginu all in? Well, a lot of the power from Zuginu uh, spam comes from you aging up super quickly and then just immediately sending units across the map, right? And then the opponent can't do anything because they have to make production buildings and then it, it kind of gets awkward, right? The reason why Night Sieves are good against that is because they lock down Zuginu and the Jushi Legacy player in their base. So if I make a Knight now and he's rallying Zuginu across the map, he's going to lose them, right? So what needs to happen is he needs to stay in his base. But if he stays in his base and I just make Knights, even if he makes Spearmen, I'm slowing down the push already by basically not doing anything. So... When you play Jushi's Legacy against Night Sieves, you have to secure your base before moving out, which is why you see he's already walling, because you need to make sure your base is walled so that you can move out. Because if he moves out at any point and attacks me, if I run in with 20 Knights, I'm just gonna mow everything down in his base, right? So he needs to wall off to make sure that I don't get in. So already, even though nothing has happened, because I'm playing a Cavalry Civ, you can see that he needs to wall off instead of make Archer Range immediately. Like I said, if he makes an Archer Range and makes Zuginu or Spearman and goes across the map, I'll just kill everything with Knights and the game is pretty much going to be over. So Kraken is experienced. Obviously, he played, um, like I said, Jushi's Legacy a lot. Um, so he kind of knows what he, uh, what he needs to do. He decided to go for a horseman or two to do some harassment while he's building up his eco. And already the Jushi Legacy's player is in an uncomfortable position where they are the ones playing defensive and trying to build up an army where they want to be aggressive. So what I do is I take the boar, I'm on the deer as well, so my food income is very very good with low amount of workers. So I can basically pump out units. Now, in general, when you play against Jushi Legacy, the uh, 1TC Zuginu spam, the worst thing you can do is go for 2 Town Center. Uh, this is why majority of the players uh, struggle against uh, Jushi Legacy and Zuginu spam. It's because they are either trying to go for 2nd TC or trying to force a castle rush. And uh, this kind of Zuginu spam will kill both of those things so you need to stay on one tc and you need to make units you need to actually fight you cannot just ignore the problem the zuginu will not go away 
So here I'm already doing some harassment trying to poke the, the food. But if you look at the upgrades, I have more upgrades. I'm getting getting all the um, blacksmith upgrades as well. I'm getting more production. He's getting more production. The military count is the same. But again, his side of the map is not fully walled. So if he moves out at any point, I can just run in and do a lot of eco damage. So again, I pick off two villagers right there. And this is already looking pretty bad because I'm seven villagers ahead. I'm trying to do some harassment on this side. My army count keeps increasing. And if you look, I have 12 knights against only three spearmen. So needless to say, if we fight now, he will absolutely lose the battle. So he's doing the thing that I mentioned. He's trying to wall off before moving out and securing these deer and the berries. So this game, we actually haven't uh, haven't even had a fight in the end. He just decides, I'm not winning this, and he tapped out. Um, he tried a wall here. I managed to uh, deny that. So I'm going over here. And one of the weaknesses of Jushi's Legacy is if they're on your side of the map, them running out of initial food and berries and sheep is not a problem because they, they have the map control. But if you take the map control from Jushi Legacy, then you just wait for them to move out on the next food source. As you can see, he is running out. And if he is here and he is not protected, doesn't have towers or walls, then I can just attack it and fight there and basically deny them from ever uh, getting more food. Three workers killed. I'm trying to work on this landmark as well. He has more units right now, but again, um, if we look at the income, like I'm going to pause right here. If we look at the income, 1.1k food, 750 wood, and um, 450 gold. And he has only 750 food, 650, and 180. So I am already quite a bit ahead on economy. So if you ignore the fact that I have knights and he doesn't, I should win by simply making more units because I have more income. Not only that, I can go on boar, um, you know, I can go on deer. I could, even, I could have even taken his boar because it's pretty far out there. If he goes to attack here, I can either counterattack on this side or I can just defend and mow down his army. Another advantage of cavalry units over infantry units, and this is same whether you're playing against English or Zuginu spam, is they are infantry based army. So what, that, what does that mean? Well, if I go out here, and I don't want to fight, I can just run away, right? He can't really chase me down with Zugun. I can just be like, eh, you know, I'm going to lose that fight. I'll just move away. But if he goes forward and he gets caught or I have more units or it's a bad engagement, there's no running away. He's going to lose everything. So uh, you need to pick your fights well whenever you're playing Cavalry Civ against Zuginu. And eventually, you know, he'll get distracted, he'll have his army split, something will happen, and then you can just go for it. So, I'm not sure if it was soon, I don't wanna... Yeah, in about a minute he just gives up, even though we haven't had a fight. So right now I'm getting this landmark torched. I know that his food sources are on this side of the map, because they're not here, right? They're not on bears or this deer. He tries to defend the knights, I intercept with archers, because one thing that is also hard for Jushi player in this situation to do is to keep track of my army, right? He cannot keep track of where it is at all times. So sometimes you can rotate like this. He sends the spearmen, you manage to kill a couple of spearmen down, and now the situation is obviously getting worse and worse. He gets denied gold. I did a lot of damage, and now what I can do, burn this, his army arrives, I just relocate and go to the bottom. So, um, kill another villager there and right now if we pause the game you might say like oh but he has more units he has 11 more units so right now i have nine more workers than he does um i have a lot more food sources open for me which means uh, you know i can go on them without it being disrupted and it, the moment i go here the game is over because he's gonna have all his villagers idle so um right now he has more units, but he only has 15 spearmen. And in in this kind of battles, if your amount of spearmen is this, is less than the opponent has knights, you're in for a bad time. So the decent amount of spearmen in this situation would be around 25 to 30. 
probably 30 plus actually because 52 archers are gonna mow down 15 spearmen extremely extremely quickly like if we compare the armies i could have probably engaged here as well because the spearmen are lagging behind and this is kind of what i mean by you can choose your fights right i can just run away on the bottom if you look this was not my whole army on the bottom i'm doing another push and now his eco is completely idle i'm making a ram and uh he has zero food income right now there's absolutely no food i'm making a ram gonna destroy these towers so even though he's chasing this army he's not really accomplishing anything and um, his unit production is completely halted right now the villager difference was 18 so he decides to just tap out and this is the again i'm playing against a high conquer player high conquer 3 player that played china and jushi's legacy and this is how the game look like at the top level when you're doing the zuino all in sometimes people ask me like if if you know jushi legacy uh one tc is so strong why don't pro players do it that's why it if you play it properly and you do certain things it just doesn't really work out now this game was japanese against jushi legacy so earlier i mentioned the reason why uh most people lose when they play japanese or hre or otd or Ayubid is they just try to force the castle rush. So what I mean by that is they see they're playing as Jushi Legacy player, they see the archer range, they see that they're going all in, and they still commit to castle rushing. So what ends up happening is you probably do get enough gold because you have a tower, right? So you do get enough gold to age up. Then they make a ram, you lose the tower, you lose the gold, you age up, and then you have no gold, and you just get overwhelmed by like 80 Zuginu and you have like five units, right? So what do you do in that situation? Well, you have to adapt. And the reason why I chose Japanese out of uh, HREO TDIB to do this is because they probably have the weakest feudal age. And I wanted to show that even if you stay in feudal age, you can still fight the Zuginu army. Even if you have like no bonus units. So I didn't use Samurai here uh, because Samurai would just get kited to oblivion. So you don't want to go Samurai. So I wanted to play with horsemen and basically the worst archers in the game and still show you that you can fight uh, Jushi Legacy. Now there's, there has been in this game two very unfortunate situations that happened and you'll see later on what exactly. Uh, but basically what ended up happening is we went, I wanted to fight his army and somehow we both missed each other's armies and I ended up losing like a crazy amount of villagers but it was still fine so i got one i got plus one melee weapon for my horseman i got the wheelbarrow upgrade for japanese i'm getting kura storehouse that i'm going to use for farms obviously but also as a lumber camp drop off so you can save 50 wood on that and i've got a really bad spawn right i got both berries and gold forward so he did a super fast archer range and he supervised a couple of Zuginu to get me off of my gold. But I have mined enough to have for um, double broad axe. I got enough for... Um, I didn't get enough for second wheelbarrow, but I got enough for plus one range attack and plus one range armor. So I'm doing a little wall here. I'm getting stables. And this is what you can do with HRE, OTD, um, or Ayubid, right? Or even Abbasid. So another reason, by the way, I wanted to mention Abbasid because I almost forgot. So another reason why Abbasid players struggle so much is because Abbasid players have that thing ingrained in their mind. Kind of like HRE. HRE is like, I must rush castle, that's the only way. And Abbasid players are like, well, I'm supposed to go to TC. So what ends up happening is Abbasid goes to DC and then they die because they can't catch up with the unit count. It's not that you cannot fight the Zuginu, it's that your unit count is always lower because you have your second DC so early and you never got the chance to catch up with unit production. So you need to adjust against this. You can't just blindly follow a builder. I'm going double archer ranges <coughs> and I'm also building my production in the back so he doesn't get rammed down. 
So what I'm doing right now is I'm gonna try to pick off reinforcements. Now, right now he is not making any spearmen, and I noticed that. So I'm trying to pick off Zuginu because I know they're gonna be without spearmen, so I can maybe do some damage. Uh, and I already got plus one ranged armor, so I'm doing some damage here, doing some harassment wherever I can. My uh, forge goes down, two houses go down, but it, it is all right. Now. Eventually what you do want to do is to get the Yumi Bannerman for your archers. He ends up destroying one or two farms here, which is decent damage. And you can see right now he puts Zuginu in the ram. I have my uh, workers in the TC, so they kill down the Zuginu and I'm trying to just snipe down the rams. Not only that will delay the push further, but it will um, also cause him to need to spend 400 more wood, right? So I clean up the first attack, he killed a farm, and obviously the two front houses. I managed to clean that up, and now, again, I'm gonna just go harass. Like, I'm not looking to counter push, because I know that he will have a lot more Zuginu back at home. So what I wanna do is I wanna raid his food sources, and the more he's spread out on the map, the more chance he'll have to raid. So what is the advantage of Japanese, for example? Well, I'm getting free farm, so... I don't need to go out on the map as much. If I was playing HRE, you could also, every once in a while, add a farm if your food sources are pretty out there or just not good in general. So here, I'm doing a little harassment. I killed um, one villager so far. He's coming back in. And I also mined 300 stones so I can get Daimyo Manor to improve my farms a little bit, but I also get the Yumi Bannerman, so my archers are not terrible anymore. Doing a little wall here. I see a lot of his units right there. Oh yeah, so what happens is, I think this is the moment, or maybe it's not. Yeah, so what ends up happening is, somehow, I think this is the moment actually. Yeah, so basically my army went here, and here, he went back up here and then he moved downwards. So we completely missed each other's armies. Not twice there with two different armies, but also we missed each other's armies here. And this is where I wanted to try and have a fight while harassing uh, or try to attack the food sources while attacking the wood line. Somehow we missed each other completely, which was pretty bad. Um. He makes a ram here, I counter push, and again, if I stayed back at home, this would have been great for me. 15 horsemen against 11 spearmen, that's obviously really good for me. But, right now, I'm across the map, I am doing some damage, I'm causing some idle time. And what ends up happening is, I have so many workers here. 20 workers, so I went from having 0 workers lost to losing 15 workers. So obviously very, very bad. I do end up cleaning this up. Just with, again, archers and horsemen, nothing special, nothing fancy. I end up clearing it all up. And now I felt like the game was really, really, really good for me. And now I feel like it's really bad because my economy is awful. So the reason why I wanted to show you this game is because it didn't go perfect, right? You can see I won the battle clearly. I lost 15 workers and I still managed to win the game with no knights, no longbows, no special units whatsoever. So I've been doing harassment on this side the whole time, causing some idle time. Now I can go into the wood line, do a little poking. And if you look, even though it's Suginu, you can still fight them uh, with your normal army. It's not unbeatable they're very strong don't get me wrong but you can still win now the worker count i'm about nine behind right now i have killed some more which is nice my farms are going up nicely i'm getting more and more food now when you're in this kind of situation uh what you can do so for example earlier when he killed all my villagers if I killed that army without losing villagers, I would have probably halted unit production, I would have aged up. 
because I gave myself enough space to finally age up and then I would upgrade um, your units. Why don't you do samurai? Because they suck. They're just going to get kited and not attack anything. Even castle samurai would get kited against this amount of Zugina and they would get one shot. Plus I got my golden eye earlier. So. Um, more units are coming through. More harassment is coming through. So you can see I'm always putting the Zuginu player in an uncomfortable position. Like I'm not letting them sit in front of my base and mass units. If you want to sit in my in front of my base, I'll just counterattack and kill your villagers, right? So here he's losing some more spearmen, losing some more villagers. And uh, yeah, behind this, I used this opportunity to try and age up. I felt like I gave myself enough of free space. Now again, imagine this game, when I killed two workers or three workers, he had zero, and then he had 15. So imagine this game if I had 15 more workers right now, or even 10, right? I would have had so, so many more units. I go for an age up here with floating gate, and I make sure I have enough resources to upgrade my units immediately. So I get plus one range attack and I get veteran archers, um, that's the minimum you need and with the next gold I am going to get veteran horsemen as well. He's making rams here and he's going for it once again. Veteran yumis are in, now they do 8 damage per shot, so that's pretty nice. Just trying to counter some units here, pick off whatever I can. Um, my veteran horsemen are not ready yet. They're gonna be ready soon. He is now aging up too, so because he's aging up, he's pulling back because he wants to fight with veteran units. And what? Oh yeah! Once again, we managed to miss each other's armies. I mean, the moment he saw me here, he was like, "Oh yeah, I'm pushing," and I was like, "Oh god, not this again!" So I was like, "Am I really gonna lose this game now?" So this was once more very uncomfortable position. It shouldn't have been this complicated. It should have been a lot easier, but it is what it is. Sometimes these things happen, right? So I come back with my whole army to clean this up. And uh, I do that pretty successfully. I'm making mounted samurai as well, still producing archers. And I managed to clean the army up completely. I burned the rams, which was very nice. And my TC stays alive. And now the army count is 52 against 13. Why is this? Well, for two reasons. Because his uh, food sources were harassed. Uh, and because his food sources are running out, he only has two berries left. Meanwhile, I have berries here, I have berries here. Nothing here. And then I have a deer pack over here. Because, again, you gotta find your advantage, whatever sim you play with or against. And my advantage is that I've had these farms for a long time, so I actually got a lot of value and a lot of food over time with them. And now we just do a counter push with all the units. And that's pretty much it. So again, this game went pretty wrong, um, I would say, for me uh, the whole way through. But I wanted to show it because, you know, not every game is perfect and sometimes things happen, unfortunate things, sometimes you mess up. But it's okay to just uh, keep going and keep playing. Now, the one thing that uh, I will say is, um, some people will say, oh yeah, so I need to micro like a top player in order to have a chance against, you know, a juicy player in, in Gold League or Platinum. You don't because... The players you're playing against will also not macro as well as the guys that I'm playing against, right? They're not going to have as many units. Their unit movement is not going to be as correct when you do a raid, even though if it's a slower raid or more scuffed raid, they're not going to pull out instantly. So instead of me killing a villager and causing some idle time, uh, you know, your opponent might lose three villagers. So your raids, while they're going to be harder to pull off in lower leagues, they're going to be a lot more successful when you do, because you're going to be end up you're gonna end up killing a lot more uh, workers. So the same way that you can't micro 
the units as well as I can. Your opponents will not micro and position and macro their units as well as my opponents can. So have that in mind. What if after clearing the first Zuganu push, he pushes again with 20, 30 Zuganus? They mass so fast. Are you not making units anymore? You should be making units as well. And as you saw in both of those games, you can have enough units to defend the Zuganu push. So if you don't have enough units and you're not macroing well or you're not producing enough, and that's something that you need to improve. Can you show Ottoman versus Jushi after? Uh, I don't have any game and I don't plan to do it, but Ottoman should be fairly, fairly easy in my opinion. Uh, because you have Sipahi, which are the best horsemen in the game, and they will absolutely eat Zuganu alive. You also have Mechter, which you can use to use the 20% uh, attack speed, or you can use them for plus one ranged armor. So you also have free unit production. Uh, I think Ottoman should not struggle against this. So yeah, Delhi now, which is a matchup that a lot of Delhi players struggle. So again, it's going to be very similar to um, to the previous game, where I'm just going to fight with horsemen and archers. Now, having Delhi uh, against Suginu, your Gazer Raiders are obviously pretty good. They are more expensive. And then your archers with Tower of Victory will have 20% attack speed, which is really, really nice. And you also have Sacred Sides to force the Zuganu player out, or the Jushi player out. I started calling Jushi's Legacy Zuganu. It is what it is. So I'm going to speed up. And Delhi is kind of middle of the road uh, to Night Sieves and to um, Sieves that don't have Knights, right? The reason for that is, like I said, your Gauzy Raiders are not really Knights, but they're stronger than a Horseman. So I'm going to use the play style that I used with uh, Nightsay with French and I'm going to put one scholar inside and I'm going to instantly make Gazi Raiders. So what does that do? It does the same thing as it did in game one. He cannot move across the map. I gave him two sheep so we're equal on sheep. Button. He cannot move across the map. So already by just making, I just made units and he is already put at a defensive. If he goes out to push, I can surround this and I can kill with just Gazi Raiders. Or if I can't, I can just go and kill his gold villagers or harass something else. So, already uh, by massing cavalry, I'm putting myself in an aggressive position and putting him in a defensive position and delaying his all-in as well. So obviously I'm going to have uh, 8 Gazi Raiders already and I can use that to harass, move around and I can do the Sacred Sight capture right now. A little bit of diving here, another villager goes down, two villagers go down. So minus three villagers. I lost a Gazi Raider there, and one Gazi Raider got pretty low, but he did survive. So I'm gonna go heal up that one. And already I'm four workers ahead in this game, which is very, very nice. Um, I'm capturing one sacred sign. I'm not looking for a battle yet, right? This is... I don't have enough archers to kill these spearmen, I only have two archers actually. So I'm just gonna chill and make it more archer ranges. I'm gonna do another counter here. I get in, two Zuganu kills, three Zuganu kills. I lose one Gazi Raider, but that's okay because I'm causing more and more idle time. So whenever you cause idle time, you're not killing units directly, but you are killing units indirectly because your opponents will have less and less uh, economy to make units. This uh, sheep denied him from uh, walling. <clears throat> and uh, now, this is already already looking pretty, pretty rough for him. So, the reason it's looking pretty rough is because his army is not big enough. And remember how I said, if you get caught on the map, you cannot really retreat anymore with English or Jushi's Legacy Infantry spam like this that's exactly what happens he gets caught off guard here i'm not caught off guard he just gets caught spearman gets sniped and then gazi raiders can clean up the rest so at this point the game is over completely because right now i'm playing a civilization that wants to spam units which is delhi uh, i have an, an army lead so i can just have more units spam way more units than he can 
And all I need to do is not actually kill him, have the sacred sites, and all I need to do is just not let him go on the food outside of his initial berry bush. Um, so you can see here, I'm checking if he's on the deer here, I'm checking if he's on berries. I looked at the boar, he's not there, he's not on this deer pack, so checking here. And I know that he's gonna run out of food, right? So I just keep making units. He needs to move out, and this is where the game ends. Because he wants to go on the deer. Now, he could have gone on the berries in the back, right? Someone might say, like, oh, well, why did he go there? Your arm is there. Well, if he went here, I would have just gone around and killed him there. So it doesn't matter. The game is effectively over. And if you look at the army count, it is a massive, massive, massive difference. And he just taps out right here. So, um, yeah. Now, again, you don't need to have knights. You know, a lot of people think, oh, I'm, you know, I'm playing Abbasid or Ayubid or Achery. There's nothing I can do. So I'll give you a quick rundown once again, how to counter it or how to play with it. So if you're playing Byzantine, you can go and you can actually go limit an eight javelin throwers or you can go uh, Hippodrome and you can go Hippodrome longbows. That also works. So you're basically playing like English. So if you're more comfortable with longbows, go with that. If you're more comfortable javelin throwers go with that japanese i showed you uh abbasid can be played same as japanese except your um army you can go with either military wing and get boot camp to have more hp on your archers or you can go culture wing so that your upgrades are cheaper and then eventually you can age up to castle uh cheaper ayubid you can go i would probably just go eco growth uh, wing into just make, making uh, a lot of units and then eventually maybe sneaking in the fast culture age up in order to get like gulams or something. Uh, China and Jushi Legacy, if you play one of those things against the 1TC, you can just do the same thing. Just spam Zuginu as well and you'll be uh, more than fine because you'll have the defense defender's advantage. French, JD and Rus. Uh, I mean French and JD, it's the same, same way you're going to play against it. Rus, same way you're going to play as French except it's going to be easier because you have Kremlin and you have a you know defensive landmark that's going to protect a lot of your resources and you can summon Kremlins. Ottoman, you have Sipahi, Mehter and Archers which are very very strong and Sipahi will absolutely mow down the Zuginu. Mongols, uh, Mongols is a bit more unique I would say because you start off with a Tower Rush so you can just Tower Rush their berries most likely or their wood line you know depending what's open but if you Tower Rush their berries you're putting them in an uncomfortable position and then you just go keshik archer similar to um, french or rus or whatever other civ malian like i said you just go javelin throwers will be good to go english longbows grats delhi i just showed you guys and then uh holy roman empire you can fight them in feudal so the same way i fought with japanese you can go horseman archer except your archers will also have 10 percent movement speed so Although Japanese archers are also faster, so actually it's pretty similar. And instead of having the Kura storehouse that's going to spawn farms, you will have Chapel that's going to give you insane economy early on. So you can add farms very early. And basically your advantage is your food is under your TC and it's safe and he needs to go out on the map. Now OTD is an interesting one. Uh, I've tried fighting in feudal and I've also tried um, aging up to castle and I've done it successfully. So what you can do with OTD is rush castle and then go archer ranges, but you need to make sure you have uh, enough gold for plus one, plus one. You know, you go with mine work plus one, plus one, and you need to make sure you have enough gold for veteran archer upgrade and dragon scale training for plus three ranged armor. And then basically you don't need gold anymore. So even if he destroys your tower on the gold with Ram, you can just spam archers that now have like five armor. Uh, range armor or something so you can do that or you can just fight it feudal but that is it if you're watching this on youtube i want to thank you so much for watching i hope you learned something new today and i hope this video makes it easier for you to deal with the zuginu spam because you're probably going to be seeing a lot of it on the ladder check me out on twitch i'm probably live right now twitch gamers let's keep going